All right, so tonight we're talking about scales. Um, so you see examples of scales on the board. So if you have a set of drawings, you can use scales to kind of see the measurements. But is that the best way to do it? No. Um, usually a set of drawings will have dimensions on it, right? There'll be something like that. Now have dimensions on it, <clears throat> and so you use the dimensions to see what size it is. And usually they'll say on the drawing, "Do not scale drawing." It'll say bold letters, "Do not scale drawing." Um, <clears throat> but so scales are usually used if we're doing like a sketch or we want to measure something out that we're going to draw, not necessarily read a drawing that's already done. <clears throat> and why do you think they tell you not to scale a drawing anymore? stuff like this. This is a B-sized drawing. So remember we were talking about B-sized paper last week? So well, how big is a, a sheet of B-sized paper? 11 by 17, right? It's that big? But we'll print a B-sized page on an A-sized piece of paper. And so if you try and scale it by measuring it, it's not going to be right. <clears throat> so that's one reason just Go by the numbers that it says, not by trying to read it off a scale. <clears throat> and why do you think we do that? Especially as cat people. It's easier to carry around a little packet like that than it is a full set. And if you look at that packet, the title block area stays the same no matter what size the paper is. So if you have a bigger sheet of paper, the title block is smaller in proportion. Um, so that gives us kind of more space to work with, so we'll, we'll do that a lot. And do it all on an A-size packet, or some places do everything on B-sides. They'll have A's scaled up to B, B-sides full-size, C's scaled down, <coughs> just so that, cause that's the size that they like to carry around. Um, <coughs> so scales are mostly used to help you draw something by hand, a hand sketch or, or a working drawing or something like that, that you're just going to use kind of you that you're going to make to use for something. <clears throat> so we have a few different scale types depending on what you're doing. So you have metric scales. So what are, what's the units for metric? Meters. Meters is their main unit. So but in drafting design stuff, usually we use millimeters. So if you see a metric drawing, that's a part or a piece of something, it's going to be in millimeters. If you see a, a civil drawing that's metric, which I've never seen, those would be meters. Uh, and on the scale, it has a scale factor on it, where it says like 1 to 100, 1 to 50, something like that. We have engineer scales. So these are inch scales divided into tenths of an inch. So between one and two, there's ten marks. Each is a tenth of an inch. So point one. We have an architect scale divided into fractions of an inch. And also showing us feet and inches. So it'll show us this many feet and this many inches. So for most most people, this is the hardest one to read, but once you understand how to read this one, it's pretty easy. It just took me like 10 years to figure it out. Because I'm not an architect. I don't do boxes. So for me, I didn't actually figure it out until I started teaching how to read it. Um, and I was like, okay, how does this thing work? Um, but once I figured it out, it's pretty easy. Engineer scale, does anyone know what that's usually used for? Besides just inch parts? What? It's used for civil drafting. 
So big stuff. So drafting has like three main areas. There's civil drafting, which is the ground and everything underneath the ground. There's architectural, which is the building. Mechanical, everything that makes up the building and inside the building. Or on top of the ground outside. <coughs> so there's the metric scale. And we're not going to use the metric scale in here. This is the engineer scale. <coughs> so on the engineer scale, each side has a 10 or 20. Um, I think I'll wrap some back. So on an interest scale, we've got numbers on it. So you can see there the forty. A fifty. See how they're bored? No. <laughs> He's trying to trick me. Sometimes instead of saying 50, it'll say like um, 0.5, but the 51 is pretty good. So that unit kind of corresponds with what, what you're measuring. It's one of those days. So that is referring to what scale the drawing is going to be. So if the drawing is going to be full scale, or ten times scale, or a tenth of scale, you use the one. Or one inch equals ten feet, or one equals one foot, you use the ten. For the twenty, half scale, so one to two. Or double scale, two to one. Or one inch equals twenty feet, you'd use the twenty scale. Or one inch equals two miles, or 20 miles, or two light years. You use the 20. So whatever the, the other unit is, so doing like civil engineering, it's always like something like this. One to 100, one, in, one inch equals 10 feet, one inch equals 100 feet. Or one inch equals two miles, one to two, which is half scale. So something like that. So whatever this number is, that's the one you'd pick. So if it was one to thirty feet, which would you use? The thirty. But if it was one inch equals six hundred miles, use the sixty. So then, by doing that, look at the numbers on the scale. Let me. I guess you can see this a little better. So look at the numbers on the scales between the 1 and the 20. What do you notice about that? Yeah, they're twice. On the 20, they're half as big, right? If I line up the zeros, now instead of being a 1, it's a 2. So by turning that, it's kind of shifting the scale smaller. So if I lined up the 30 with the 10, what would happen? What would be at the one? A three. So it's doing the scaling for us. And then so when we read the scale, we just read the number off. Okay? So 
So if I'm doing this, so one inch is 10 feet. I bring it over, line it up. And so what's that? quarters away between those two, right? So this is one, and this because it's 10 feet, right? So that means that that's not one, that's 10 feet. So that's 11 feet, 12 feet, 13 feet, and then point some five feet. Does that make sense? So instead of it being a one, now it's a 10. And I kind of guesstimated what that that other piece was. What would happen if that was going to be one inch equals 100 feet? What happens? What's that? What's our number going to be? That's yeah, 137.5. Now that's 100, 110, 120, 130, 137.5. Questions? Right, let's go to that one. So, one inch was two miles. <coughs> Which scale are we going to use? Use the 20, right? We get the 20 over, line it up. There we go. So, how long is that line? change the number for us, we just have to add the, the decimal place, or change the units. So we're still going to just read the, the thing and then say whatever that is. So, what's that? Yeah, about 2.75 miles, right? Because we have one mile, two mile, two and a half, two and... 2.6, 2.7, 2.75. So it's not saying one inch is two miles away? Yep, because this, remember, this is one inch. Yeah. Oh, right. Because it's already changed the number for us. I was, I was thinking it was like two and four miles. Like yeah, because remember back to this one? Yeah. And that's where people get messed up on this scale. Right. Is they forget that this is an inch. That's not an inch. Even though it's one, that's not a real inch. So if you look at this, you might be able to see that too. That okay, that's one inch. Okay, that's ten, and see where it lines up with. So this is a real inch, and that's the drawing unit. Okay. So we're we're just gonna change the units. So instead of being inches now, it's two miles. Because that was already two inches. So then we just change change it to two miles. It's good. So what is it at half scale? The drawing was done half size. What's that measuring it? It's 
a real hard one. No? Don't do anything to the number. Leave the number alone, just change the units. That's 2.75 inches. Leave the number alone, just change the units. Because miles, miles. Inches, inches. If I wanted that to be one to the one inch equals twenty feet. So one inch equals twenty feet, what is that? No? Yeah, twenty seven point five. So twenty seven point five. Because now this is 20, so 10, 20, 25, 26, 27, and a half. So don't change the number, just change the units on the back. So this has two full digits, this is going to have two full digits. Until you get to, if I got this all the way up to 10, reading here, then you would have an extra one, right? So if I measure this line and on the scale it went to 10, and this was 20, it'd be 100, right? So it'd be 10 tens. <clears throat> Any questions? You're going to have lots of practice on this. So if you don't get it, work on the practice and then call me over if you don't get it. Okay? <clears throat> the next one is architectural scale. And this is the, the funny guy. Does anyone know what the trick about an architectural scale is? Throw it away. <laughs> no. What's different about an architectural scale than any other scale? It's architectural. It's architectural. <laughs> yeah, it's in fractions, but that's kind of the same. It's just decimal fractions. What? The smallest units are at the end. Right Besides that. Right. It has, on each side, there's two scales. There's a scale starting from the right going to the left, and from the left going to the right. And so, yeah, there's two sets of numbers on it. So you have to watch out which ones you're looking at. So look, look here, this one right here, there's no, it's just one scale. But if you look here, there's a zero right here, and there's a zero right there. What? Um, yeah, they're kind of half they're doubling each other. I like I said, I don't do houses. Um, but here again, there's a zero there, zero there. Um, where's the zero? Zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. The so zeros on both sides. Damn, architects. Drawing boxes, they don't need to make it hard complicated, right? <laughs> um, see, I love architects. Um, so this is actually how it breaks down. So on this one, you can see this number here, the eighth. That means it's an eighth of an inch equals a foot for that scale. So we've got a zero here. What else is different here? Let's go back to that other point. So here, zero, then numbers, right? Go here, about zero. How about stuff on the outside? What's that about? Yeah, it breaks the foot into inches. So if I actually measured this, that would be an eighth of an inch. That'd be an eighth of an inch that I measured. And so that's representing a foot. So now that's broken down into fractions of a, of a foot, so into inches. So right here, what's that? Six inches, right? So I measured from the zero to that line, that's six inches. So what is each one of those little lines? Two inches. 
So we have two from 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, right? So each of those lines is 2 inches. Go to this one. I draw to my other side. Now it's a quarter inch of a foot. So this was measure a quarter of an inch. So again, still, what does each one of those represent? So middle here, this is the way I always like to do it. Because they, they always change. So I always find halfway, because I know that's six. And if I can, I find halfway again, I know that's three. And then now I can see that, yeah, it's one inch equals mark, every mark. Okay? So that's always how I do it. I, Look at it, go, okay, where's six inches? Now where's three inches? Now, okay, there's an inch. Can I break that down any, down any further? So if I look at this, how am I going to measure this? I've got numbers going both ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up, and I want to set it on the zero. Just kind of to hold it all off right now. So now I look, if I look this way, I've got 0, 4, and 8, 12 that are going up the direction that I'm measuring. But I also have numbers going down the other direction. So what is that line right there really for, for me now that I'm measuring? That's 1, right? Because if here's 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Is that making sense? So you kind of have to figure out where your, your numbers are and then figure out what the other ones are in between. So now, can I measure where that end of the line is? I can kind of guess. But what should I do to it? If I slide it that way a little bit, now can I measure that, that line? So now I just, I, I go back to the nearest foot. So now I know that this is how many feet? Nine. So that's nine feet. Now I can look over here to see the inches. So how many inches is that? Yeah, eight. It's past the six to the eight. So that's nine feet, eight inches. We got some of the experience back there. <clears throat> You're not an architect, are you? No. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so we kind of line it up, we shift it back to the nearest foot, and then we measure the inches on the end. Once you got that figured out, reading them is pretty easy. Let's look at that one. So, what's our first step? Zero. Yeah, find the zero, right? Now you go back to the next foot. Where is the next foot? Is that the next foot? Look carefully. Look where your other numbers are. So I go 0, 1, 2, right? So my, my ones are these marks, the longer marks. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's not one of my marks. And you bring it all the way over to there. So sometimes you don't just go to the next mark. You have to actually go to the next foot that you, that's on your scale. OK? Yep. So this number, ignore it. That's if you're coming the other way. So if you're measuring something from, from this side going this way, then you'd use that number. Because since we're going this way, it doesn't fit into our scale, so we're just going to forget about it. So in the other example that you show us, you have the numbers, those bigger numbers in the bottom. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you ignore those? Well, that would be, because remember that counting. So it would be one, two, three, four. You just change the number to your system now. Because now we're going this way, and that, that's a four. So that'd be three, two, one. 
So then you just use the use R number. And that's the hardest part about the architectural scale is figuring out which numbers you need and what they really should be. Okay? Does whichever side you're on, that side's gonna be the low numbers. <coughs> so figure it out what, what those low numbers need to be. So what is that one? Four feet. Yeah, ten inches. Any questions? One more. Right up there. We slide it to the next number. <coughs> what are those marks? What is each one of those small marks? Yeah, sixteen. What? Sixteen. No. Wait, which one? A sixteenth. Or a sixteenth of an inch? Small something. This whole thing's a foot, right? On the scale, it's a foot. Oh, so that's our yeah, six okay. inches. Three. One. Make so a half. Okay. That didn't go to the right spot. So that's an inch. So this is. That's your half. Remember, the, from the zero to the outside, that's always one foot. Yeah. So now that's a half of a foot, or half of an inch, for the smallest mark. That's why I say, on every one, you have to figure out what those marks are again. <coughs> that's the other hardest thing. So what's that? Feet? Two feet. How many inches? Is it five? Five and a half. Yeah, five and a half. Right? Two feet, five and a half inches. Questions? <clears throat> All right, so that's the scales part. We're also going to talk about line types tonight. <clears throat> so we're drawing something. We'll come back to this later. <clears throat>